Hey guys, this is John, and I'm back analyzing another endgame. This is from my repertoire on Chessable, entitled Essential Rook Plus Pawn vs. Rook Endings. That's a free repertoire. You can go on and learn the positions, and you can also watch my video accompaniments, which I hope are enhancing your knowledge of these typical rook endgames. So the ending we're going to look at today is a great way to gauge someone's overall rook endgame ability. If you give this position to someone and ask them what the optimal strategy is for both sides, you will quickly determine whether someone has spent a reasonable amount of time on rook endgames. So black is ahead of pawn here. So black has a pawn on a2. It's on the verge of promotion, but it is blocked by black's own rook. So the question I'm going to pose to you is, let's say it's white to move. What should white do? And if you want to ponder that question, feel free to pause your video. Okay, so white to play must display knowledge of a counterintuitive idea if they hope to hold this position. It is a draw, but white will have to play something that kind of goes against what you would normally expect here. And the first thing I want to get out of the way is, if white decides to check the black king, it's not going to lead anywhere. Checks are just a temporary solution in this case. The king is going to zigzag over and eventually attack the white rook. White's going to run out of checks. Meanwhile, we have to appreciate what black is threatening here. If black got the move, black would play this nice little skewer idea, rook to h1. And this is the main thing you have to spot and realize here. If you didn't spot this, you probably didn't figure out the position. But rook, H8, rook h1 is a great idea because we're threatening to promote the pawn. And if white takes the pawn, then black has rook h2 check, the skewer. King moves away, and we uncover the attack on the rook on a2, win the game. So black is threatening that move. Therefore, if you suggested king to e2, hoping to slide the king over eventually to the b2 square to attack the black rook and win this pawn on a2, well, sorry you failed this problem, because rook h1 works for exactly the same reason. Threatening to promote, and if white takes the pawn, we get the skewer. A win for black. So what white has to do is go to one of the safe squares. And here, the safe squares are either g2 or h2. So white should play king to g2, moving the king the opposite direction, towards this side of the board, away from the pawn. How could that be? Well, once you appreciate the threat, rook h1, it makes a lot of sense. If rook h1 is played now, we can just take the rook. We actually win the game. So we're stopping black's rook from getting behind to set up the skewer. And white can do that with either the king on h2 or g2. It works very much the same way. Many other squares are dangerous for white. So let's say we had played king e3 instead. Maybe you intended to take a route, I don't know, like this to get to b2. Well, king e3, rook h1 doesn't work anymore because a rook takes a2 and there's no skewer. But instead, black can play rook e1 check. So white has exposed themselves to a check. And after we deliver that check, we have time to promote. Black wins. So you have to have an appreciation for the safe squares as the side who is down the pawn here. And king g2 is mandatory if you're the defensive side. And from here, all you would do is wait. So if black played some move, like let's say king f7, you would just keep your king on either g2 or h2. It'd be fine to just shuffle it if you wanted. And black has no way to win this position because they can't ever free their rook up effectively without losing their rook or the pawn. And even if the king works its way over, so if I just demonstrate this, and eventually attacks the rook, all you're going to do is keep your rook on the A file, hitting the pawn. The only thing that you have to be aware of, and where your sense of danger does have to kick in, is if the enemy king gets their king all the way up to attack, or sorry, defend the pawn on A2. In this case, you must do something active, because a winning move will just lose to the rook coming over, now that that pawn is protected, and black will soon promote. Again, checks are just temporary. The black king is going to zigzag back. So what you need to do, as soon as the king is helping to defend that pawn, as soon as it's touching that pawn, now you give a check. You force the king away from the defense of the pawn. If black tries to stay close, check again. King b2, check. You know the drill. And as soon as the king is away from the pawn, you can just go back and observe it again. So rook a1. Here you could also deliver a check, although again, the king might come back and zigzag. But as soon as that king is no longer defending the pawn, put the rook back on the A file, draw. No way for black to strengthen their position. So knowledge of 
the safe squares is what enables white to hold this position. And I know it, it seems correct to approach the pawn with your king, but if ever you're res to resort to that against a pawn that is on the verge of promotion, you have to make certain that you're not getting skewered. I mean, if the king was close enough, like let's say the king were on c2 and it were white to move. Well, of course, in this case, then king b2 is going to be correct, going after the rook and the pawn. You know, here, take, skewer, check, here, we're defending the rook. So if the king is very close, this may not matter, but often the king is a distance away, and you want to have knowledge of those safe squares, because if your king kind of gets caught in the no-man's land of the middle of the board like this, that skewer is going to come back to bite you. So king g2 is holding. There are some exceptions as to when you can use this idea. Uh, for instance, in an upcoming video, we're going to look at a scenario where the pawn is actually two squares away from promotion, and that makes it trickier, believe it or not. You would think that the pawn closer to promotion uh, would be a more clear-cut position for the side that's trying to win, but actually, if you were black, you would prefer this pawn to be a little further back, because then uh, this sort of safe square waiting game may not work if black eventually marches their king up and tries to use a2 as shelter. So we'll explore that in the Vancouver positions section. But for now, just memorize these safe squares, g2, h2. You know, if we were to flip this and it were white the one who was up the pawn, then black safe squares would be g7, h7. Or you could even mirror it on the other side of the board, b2, a2, b7, a7. That's going to help you out in these types of setups. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion of this particular rook endgame. So commit this to memory. Take a look at that repertoire on Chessable, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll be back again with more Rook Endgame videos. All right, bye guys.